Good morning and welcome. Welcome to the Center of Spiritual Living in the heart of Las Cruces, where your center is alive and well and in our hearts, and where our vision is a world in loving partnership for the good of all. I'm Bob Greer. I'm your practitioner in duty today. I'm also your board president, and I have some announcements for you. Um, the first one is keeping connected by joining our weekly Spiritual Circle discussion group on Zoom. Uh, that happens on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. And uh, we discuss articles from the current month's Science of Mind magazine. And uh, if you need a copy of that, those are available at our center. Just call to make an arrangement for a time to pick one up. Um, we are still planning on having our treasure sale, hopefully in the spring. And uh, if you have items that you would like to donate, uh, you can bring them in uh, clean, ready to be sold. Uh, and, and drop them off at the uh, children's area for collecting. Um, please uh, call the office to make sure that there's somebody here that can meet you and uh, set up a time to, to come in and do that. Uh, we try to make sure there's not too many people showing up at once, as you can understand. Um, and some of those items uh, that uh, we think might be able to be easily sold uh, we're in the process of putting online uh, to sell through either eBay or Facebook. And a big shout out to Pam Hett for putting that all together and, uh, and doing that for us. Uh, additionally, we're collecting food for food baskets for local families. Uh, and we'll be doing that through December the 9th. This is uh, uh, in cooperation with the other uh, New Thought Centers here in town, Family and Youth is having their second annual holiday turkey basket donation. And what they're asking for is uh, items like box mashed potatoes, canned vegetables, corn, green bean, cranberries, box stuffing, oven bags. And then of course they'll accept any monetary donations if you'd like to contribute to that. Um, Another item is the uh, 2021 spiritual journeys are in the office and are ready to be uh, picked up. If anybody uh, wants one of those, they're a great way to have a daily practice of doing a little journaling. And uh, so just as a reminder, if you need to drop any of this stuff up or pick up any of those, just give us the, a call to the office and talk to Kathy and uh, just make sure you find a, a good time where it, it works for everyone. Um, and we have a new class, or not a class, but a new thing starting, uh, Coping with COVID. Uh, Faith Brown has put this together, and uh, she's a member and also a board member with us. And Coping with COVID is a peer support group, which will be offering participants some solutions to help with cope coping with the times that we're living in. We'll be sharing with one another, discovering me methods of relaxation, uh, participating in creative activities and learning coping skills. So everyone is welcome, please join us. This is, starts on Tuesday, December 8th at 5.30 and, uh, and it'll be going on for about 10 weeks, but you can join in as you can. And so for more information here again, uh, call the office or see our newsletter. And while I'm on that subject, uh, you can find all these details in our weekly e-news that goes out on Thursday. Uh, if you're not receiving that currently, uh, you can sign up on the website or you can call the office and they'll put you on there. It's, it's an amazing thing. I was looking at it over the weekend and, and uh, it's, just, uh, it, it's just chock full of a lot of good information. It tells you all the upcoming um, events that are happening here in the speakers. And a shout out especially to Catherine Conway uh, who puts this together and, and Jane Ray who uh, puts all the beautiful graphics together for us. And it's really quite a beautiful piece of work. So uh, if you haven't looked at it lately, take a moment to check it out. And um, you know, last but not least, I wanna just give a, a little shout out to our uh, uh, in-house staff person right now, Kathy Lady, who's uh, who is our pretty much the only person that's working here during the day, and she's here, but seems like almost every day, and uh, she's been doing this on a volunteer basis, and uh, it's just been a tremendous help, and 
One of the things that I love most about our community is the level of participation by our members and how many people are just willing to step up and help out. And uh, we're, we're truly grateful for that. It really means a lot. So uh, on that same subject, we fully believe in the principle of circulation and prosperity. And therefore, we are a tithing community. And uh, if you uh, are looking to get involved in some way, we are looking for members to join our tithing committee uh, to help us determine where our tithes go. Um, we meet on Zoom, obviously, and uh, once a month. So uh, if you would like uh, more information on that, just give us a call at the office or, or contact a board member. Uh, this month, 10% of all the, the t uh, money that we receive that are being tithed to La Semilia Food Center. And it says La Semilia, La Semilia Food Center's mission is to build a healthy, self-reliant, fair, and sustainable food system in the El Paso del Norte region of southern New Mexico and El Paso. Uh, it is the only nonprofit organization solely devoted to fostering and building strong relationships that empower youth and families to grow and cook good food, create positive change, and foster connections between food, health, and local economies. Um, all right, and uh, as your practitioner in, in service today, I just want to remind you that we are available to uh, do prayer with you over the phone, and uh, if you'd like to take advantage of that, just call the office and they'll arrange for a practitioner to give you a call and uh, let us know how we can support you uh, we also have a prayer request button on our website where you can fill out a, a form online and ask for prayer, and uh, those are confidential. They go direct to one of our practitioners and then are shared with our prayer team, which meets weekly. The, the combination of folks from all of our New Thought communities locally here, and uh, we love doing that. So at this time, it's time for song, silence, and prayer. In this moment, I am hope, hope is this moment, hope, 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 this moment is what I moment I am light light is this moment light 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 this moment is what I moment I am still still is this moment still So just opening to this moment, knowing the perfect presence of a loving spirit is right here, right now, in this place and in everywhere, knowing that each one of us is connected to this divine source at all times, that it moves through and expresses uniquely and divinely as each of us. So grateful for this opportunity to have the service today, so grateful for all of those who make this possible. I just bless this time and know that it is all good, and so it is. So uh, for today's reading, it's a couple of excerpts, uh, a few excerpts from the Science of Mind text by Ernest Holmes um, from page 440 and 280. And the first one is uh, 
Freely ye have received, freely give. When the law of circulation is retarded, stagnation results. It is only as we allow the divine current to flow through us, in us, and out that we really express life. The law of giving and receiving is definite. And then the next is, because of the unity underlying all life, no one lives entirely unto him herself, but through each we live unto the whole, which whole embodies all others' lives. And the gift of God is the nature of God and eternal givingness. God cannot help making the gift because God is the gift. And then lastly, Lowell said, the gift without the giver is bare, and it is just as true that there can be no gift without a receiver. And so it is. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself. I didn't know that the grace of God was sufficient And I didn't know the love of God was at hand But now I can say If you are discouraged Struggling to make it through another day You've got to let it go Let it all go And this is what you have to say I release, I let go Let the Spirit run my mind And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God I'm Reverend Bonnie, the community spiritual leader here at the Center for Spiritual Living in the heart of Las Cruces. And we are already in the month of December. And this month, we are celebrating divine love and truth. We often say, you can't outgive God. And since God is synonymous with love, I guess we could say you can't outgive love. But what exactly does that mean? Some might think of it as being similar to you reap what you sow or what goes around comes around. Some might call it karma. What we put out there comes back to us and some say it comes back tenfold, which means for some things that we put out there, they come back to haunt us, but hopefully most of the things we put out there come back in the form of gifts. And more, 
literally maybe we could say you can't outgive God because in the giving is the receiving. The giving and receiving are really intertwined, part and parcel of the same thing. In our practitioner class, we're reading a book called 7,000 Ways to Listen by Mark Nepo. And in the first chapter, he asks, asks us to think about the gifts that we were born with, that we came in with. He puts it this way, describe a learning you were born with and how you came to discover it. And where does this learning live in you now? Well, I thought about that and I was thinking, what learning, what thing did I come in with? I saw that as like, what gift did I come in with that I seem to be born with? And what popped into my head is the gift of nurturing, mothering, and caretaking. My mother did not have that gift. She would admit that she wasn't much of a nurturer, so I didn't learn it from her. But at a very young age, I loved babies. When my brother was born, I was only a year and eight months old and I wanted to hold him. There's pictures of me holding babies all throughout my life. And I always wanted a baby of my own. In high school, several of my friends, a lot of people called me mom. And in college, I studied early childhood development along with my other majors because I anticipated being a parent and I wanted to understand the process of children growing up and how I might best nurture that. As you know, I've shared before, I took my parenting very seriously and very consciously. <clears throat> so I noticed again that Mark Nepo said, what learning were you born with? What did we come in with? And I felt like that learning could be that gift that we had to give the world. And yet what I've learned and started to realize more recently is that learning that we come in with, that gift that we have sort of innately and naturally is what we have to offer the world. And it's that cutting edge, <clears throat> excuse me, where we continue to learn in this lifetime. It's that place where <clears throat> when we give, as we do this, we continue to learn some of life's deepest lessons and we receive some of life's most amazing gifts. As I took on this mom role in high school, I found my way into friendships and relationships through caretaking and nurturing. And then, I got to learn how it is that nurturing and caretaking can morph into codependency and even control, and how it can become basically the other side of addiction's unhealthy coin. I had to learn and discover where that fine line between giving and enabling was and how not to cross it. Likewise, mothering, when I actually became a mother, brought me some of the greatest joy and has also brought some of the deepest grief. The learning then was in the gifts, even the gifts in the grief. And from the learning through this givingness that I had and this mothering, I also had to learn that I'm not the only one who gets to experience the joy of giving. In fact, the way that I have come to determine whether I'm reaching that line between giving and enabling is when I stop feeling joy, when I begin to feel resentment or frustration or even anger. Because a gift, when we are truly giving, it does bring the giver joy. And I realized that others wanted to experience that joy too. So I have had to also learn with this learning I came in with how to gracefully receive. In college, I did a research project. We were supposed to come up with something we could do in real time, something that we could do on our own. So my research project was around how people received compliments. And when I'm talking about a compliment, I'm, say, I'm talking about an expression of praise, commendation or admiration. And I would really watch people and I would find things that I could genuinely compliment them, 
compliment them about, whether it was an activity they were doing, something, how they looked, what they were wearing, because it had to be a genuine compliment. And then I noted after the exchange how they received that compliment. And I started to realize that there were various categories that people fell into. There were those who deflected it, oh, this old thing. There were those that would explain it away. Well, I really didn't do that much. And there were those who would immediately come back with a compliment. Well, you're really amazing too. And then there was that smaller group that would actually just receive it and say thank you. Recently, I read an article. And in the article, the author talked about how she complimented a worker of hers for the work that this person was doing. And when she did that, the worker stopped what she was doing and looked at her and said, I am receiving that. I never heard that response when I did my research. And yet, what a response to just stop and take it in. I am receiving that. And I realized then that compliments are gifts. And they can serve both the giver and the receiver when the compliment is received. They bring mutual joy and gratification. In our reading this morning, Ernest Holmes said, there is no gift without the receiver. And in that same book that I was talking about before, The 7,000 Ways to Listen, the third chapter is called The Gift in Receiving. And in that chapter, Mark Nepo starts it by saying, we usually think of giving as more important than receiving. Yet, only by receiving light can flowers grow into their beauty and pollinate the earth. Only by absorbing rain can the earth grow what feeds us. Only by inhaling air can our bodies walk us to each other. Only by accepting each other's pain and vulnerability can human strength grow between us. In these ways, receiving involves absorbing, inhaling, and accepting the life that flows through us, between us, and around us. These are all deeper forms of listening. So to cut off the receiving is to cut off the giver's joy in giving and to cut off part of life's flow. At the end of that chapter, Mark Nepo asks this question. When have you experienced the giving being the receiving? He had shared a story where he was asked by his grandmother to come and spend one of his vacations in college at her house and help her box up some things and take care of some family business. And so he was giving his time by going there. And yet while he was there, his grandmother shared stories and reminiscences and talked about her life. And he realized in that moment, as he was giving his time, he was also receiving so much. And the giving and the receiving had become one thing. And so he's asking us to consider, when did we experience that in our life? When our giving was also our receiving. And you can note also that giving takes many forms. It can be of our time, like he did. It can be a compliment. It can be our attention. It can be a tangible thing. It can be when we listen. And it can be that learning that we were born with and that we bring into the world. I realize now that my son's final gift to me was forcing me into a place of receiving. I was knocked so far down that I couldn't defend anymore, I couldn't deflect it, I couldn't hold all of this at arm's length. All I could do was just receive the enormous outpouring of love that came flooding my way. And it came from people who came to be by my side. It was in the form of cards and food and flowers and calls and texts and Facebook posts all different forms and expressions of love. And sometimes this giving and receiving was simultaneous. I could see it working both ways. And then I realized that it also sometimes gets stretched over many, many, many years. About two months after he passed, I received an unexpected gift in the mail. A longtime friend 
and past colleague sent me a surprise gift that she and her boyfriend had made. It was homemade um, sprouted wheat bread that they, I guess, took a lot of time. She explained the process. And she sent a little thing of honey and written out instructions on how to toast it and let the butter melt into it and then the honey. And she sent a little jar of some Japanese sesame seeds that I could sprinkle on top. And she said, this is comfort food for someone who has comforted so many. Well, the food in and of itself was an amazing gift. But that message that she wrote along with it really touched me. Because I thought, well, if I've ever comforted her, it had to have been over 15 years ago, because it's been that long since we've been in each other's presence. And so I felt like, in some ways, I was cashing in on, a, on ages and ages, years and years, of this giving that I had come in to do. And yet I also began to see in real life what it is that we are taught, what I had heard so much, and yet I was starting to really see it, that a true gift can never be given with the thought, hmm, I wonder what I'm going to get in return. I never dreamed in all those years that I would need to be evaluating receiving in this kind of a way. And yet what I realize is that when and if we give with the intention of getting, it stops being a gift and becomes a contract. Let me say that again. If we give with the intention of receiving, of having something in return, that becomes a contract. And yet, what I'm also seeing is that giving and receiving are so intertwined that you really can't pull them apart. When we give a true gift, it is given with no expectations of something in return, with no resentments, and it doesn't exhaust us in the process of giving. Instead, we are filled with joy and we feel a sense of completeness just by giving. That is a true gift. And since this is one of my areas that I realize is my learning, I now ask myself a lot of the time, can I and am I giving this right now freely with no strings attached? I have to check myself and make sure that it's a real gift. Edwin Gaines talks about tithing in the same way. She talks about tithing as giving back to where we get our spiritual food. And a tithe, a true tithe, is giving free of any regulations and restrictions on how that tithe is used. Now there is designated donations, and we can give a designated donation or we can give a true tithe, which is no strings attached. And being someone who works here at the center, I know that we receive both. We receive designated donations, we receive tithes, and both are gratefully received. And I want to, at this time, actually thank all of you who have sent in year-end donations and tithes and offerings throughout this whole time that we haven't been able to meet in person. We are still a thriving center, and for that I am so grateful to each and every one of you for each aspect of how you've been able to give to us. And I really hope that as you've given, you've felt that joy that comes from giving as well. So. What is the learning that you were born with? What is the learning that came in with you? What is that gift that you're bringing the world? And what is that place where you continue your learning through that gift? Whenever I've been faced with a challenge over the years, my prayer partner and friend, Reverend Terry Lund, would always say, look for the gift. And she even said that to me after Ben passed. And that was hard at first. I thought, look for the gift in this. And she kept saying, look for the gift. At first, I thought that if I looked for the gift, it would be a betrayal to his life. But the gifts just kept coming. So now I've learned that gifts don't take away the grief. But like Ernest Holmes says, they rob our grief of hopelessness. The gifts, whether they're tangible or otherwise, have felt like padding around the pain. 
They felt like soft bandages applied, even if the bleeding continued. To look, to look that face of love in the face, to see that love expressed on so many, on all of you, on family and friends, and in the faces of Ben's friends, some of whom I had never met, to look that face of love in the face has been a true gift and it has robbed my grief of hopelessness. And another learning that has come along through all of this is that sometimes we can't change what happens during our human experience, but in our interconnectedness, we all discover how much we truly matter. Recognizing and seeking ways to contribute to the lives of those who have been treated like they don't matter in our society and in our culture and allowing them and everyone to fully feel and have the experience of mattering, that is what we are all about. That is what this teaching is all about. I had a real aha moment the other day, and it's a little bit difficult to explain, so I hope you can follow me on this one. I was thinking about all the pain that my son's death has caused so many people. And I thought to myself, well, I just couldn't do that to the people I love. And then after reading 7,000 Ways to Listen, I had this thought, well, it's not just about the people I love. It's about the people who love me or have been fed by me. We often don't know how many people we've touched. We really don't. We don't know what we mean to others sometimes. And yes, you matter, and you mean something to someone. We all matter because we are all God and love expressing in some way. And so to hurt ourselves hurts those who care about us and who love us. And I know and I understand and I have been told, I've been learning here recently, that in that moment when someone feels such emotional pain that they contemplate and sometimes succeed in dying by suicide, they feel and believe they are alone and detached. There is nothing other than that sense of being an isolated you at that moment. And that is why one leaves through suicide is that they feel in that moment there is no other choice. I understand that. And that is why I believe our teaching is so important. It is so important for us to get this out there to more people. An isolated you is a myth. An isolated you is a myth. Everyone and everything is connected and part of this fabric we call the universe. And yes, I mean universe, not just the earth, not just this planet, but the stars, the planets, the moon, everything. We are all interconnected. We all influence each other. We know that if one species goes extinct, it impacts all kinds of species around it, from plants to animals to us humans. We all have our place and our purpose. We all matter. I liken it to threads in a garment. And that thread that's dangling, in fact, I saw one on the end of here. If you had a dangling thread like that on a garment, when you yank it and the whole hem comes unraveled, or you yank it and a piece of the garment falls off. I know that sometimes we may feel like we are an isolated thread, worthless and unsightly, dangling there off of the garment of life. And yet, let me tell you, if you pull that thread and try and remove it, so much will unravel. So much will fall apart. Every one of us has come in with a learning. And that learning helps to hold that fabric of life together. For those of us who are part of the Centers for Spiritual Living and other New Thought teachings, we need to continue to teach this and exemplify this truth of our oneness and our interconnectedness. 
are mattering and everyone's mattering. Ernest Holmes was quoted in an article in the November Science of Mind magazine on page 78, and he said, humanity and divinity will be identical when we recognize divinity in humanity. We must learn to see through the apparent, to judge not according to appearances, to realize that at the center of every person's soul, God is enthroned, every person's soul. And to quote Reverend C.C. Coltrane, we need to bring all people up to the same level as mattering as those of us who were born into the privilege of white skin have mattered for so many centuries in this country. We want all, regardless of race and gender expression, creed, religion, sexual orientation, all to be seen as mattering by the systems and structures of our society as well as by ourselves. So mattering is like love. There is no limit. We can elevate all to the same level of mattering and we will all benefit. So in these times, I keep looking for the gift. I keep looking for the gift in the midst of so much loss and so much uncertainty. And what I keep finding is love. Years ago, when I first started here as the community spiritual leader in Las Cruces, another minister tried to tell me they don't need someone to love them, they need some strong leadership. While the God in me just kept saying, just love them. And since my son's passing, the message has come through even louder and even clearer. Love yourself and love all others. In the unity magazine from September, October, there was an article called From Fear to Joy. And the person that wrote this could have been writing the story of my learning that I've been talking about that I came in with. She said, we often believe that our thoughts create our reality. And then we start to fear our thoughts and try and control them. That's what happened to me. I've always been a positive person because I wanted everyone to like me, because I was a people pleaser, and because I was afraid of anyone ever saying that I was negative. I couldn't understand how, as such a positive person, I could get cancer, if it was true that our thoughts create our reality. It took my near-death experience to realize that it's not our thoughts that create our reality, it's really what we feel about ourselves. When you truly love yourself, then you know, and when you know how worthy and deserving you are, you don't judge yourself, even when you do have negative thoughts. That really spoke to me. And last Sunday, in the reading that Teresa did for us, and it's from the same article that Ernest Holmes, um, his writing that was put into the November Science of Mind magazine. It said in this reading, when the members of a community love one another, that community is solid, prosperous, and happy. Nations are bound together by common interests and common affections. When the whole world realizes this truth, it will unite in thought and in action. Love alone can solve the world's problems and bring about the day of universal peace. Love is the message and love is the gift. Today, Sunday, December 6th, this center, the center here in Las Cruces, is celebrating 44 years. It's our 44th birthday. And over those 44 years, we have had ups and downs. We have grown really big. We have shrunk really small. We've grown again. We keep vacillating. But through it all, we have continued to love each other. We love each other despite our differences, despite our diverse personalities, despite some people even occasionally not getting all their needs met, as we return to that divine love and truth of our oneness, as we allow ourselves to find it in our hearts to love and share that love with each other and outside of this community, 
our community has flourished. It grows and it continues to thrive. Even now, as we might feel we are in isolation, when you're at home alone, it's still true that an isolated you is a myth. We maintain our loving connection through all kinds of acts of kindness within our community. As Bob said in the announcements, it's amazing how people keep stepping up and helping each other out. We've had people take others' groceries, people help with their laundry in their backyards, giving people rides fully masked and protected. We have expressed our connection and our love over the phone, through Zoom, through cards and letters, and through the service over YouTube. 44 years. Happy birthday, CSL, in the heart of Las Cruces. My gift to you is to recommit to just loving all of you. And to continue to open to receiving your love. As I am learning that it's a deeper and more amazing gift when it's not just my offering to you, when it's my ability to open to that gift and receiving. When it comes to the gift of love, giving and receiving are one and the same. The gift is in the giving and in the receiving. And so it is. I love you all. Let's just take a moment. Let's go within to that heart space and allow ourselves to feel the wholeness, the oneness, the completeness of God, love expressing in us. Allow yourself to consider that first time when you discovered that the giving is also receiving, when the two melded into one, when you were filled with that joy that comes from being a giver that is still receiving at the same time. I see for this community a continuation of this truth that we are interconnected, that giving and receiving are part of the flow, and that the love is what we share so strongly among each and every member of this community. That in our separate homes, we are not isolated. We are still connected and one. And I affirm this, and I know this, and I see for each person this morning hearing this talk, feeling their connection to everyone else at whatever time they listen, to all of the people in our community, we find ways to connect and reach out and remember to love each other. I'm so exceedingly grateful for this community and for this opportunity to continue the learning that I was born with. And so it is from that place of gratitude that I just release these words and trust that love is forever growing as we all say together in our own space, and so it is. Someone becoming free And it lives in the laughter of Children at play And in the blazing sun That gives life to the day It moves the planets and the stars it's been the mover of mountains since the beginning of time. Oh, mystery, you are alive. I feel you.
And so I want to thank you again for joining us, for listening this morning, and being a part of our community. Please continue to stay home, but remember you're not isolated. You are connected. We are all connected. Stay safe. I love you all. I leave here in peace. I step out in love I know everything I need is part of me And I will not speak Until I first think Is it kind and true? Hi, it's Nancy and Pam We miss you all